Hello, YouTube land. Um, just a quick update in the middle of everything I'm doing. Um, it's mid-afternoon again, and I'm only now getting around to figuring out lunch. <laughs> um, had a last-minute appointment rescheduled for today from the other day, which I couldn't make because it was too damn hot out, and I could not leave the house and be healthy at the same time. So I get there this morning, and they're like, oh, he called out sick today. I'm like, dude. Son of a... 11 in the morning. Called out sick. There's a lot of profanity added out just there. So, on to a different, happier, productive subject. Soon we will be going to visit my parents in Maine. Which is good. Because I was there in, like, May for my sister, but... I only spent like a day or so with my parents, and my dad and I really get Chernobyl if we spend too much time together without, you know, mom the buffer. Um, but I do like being there. My dad and I do have a fair amount of interest in common, not surprising given how much time he spent with me growing up. Um, but, you know, I also have a really good time with my mom. Um, my sister was just there, and she and her husband stayed, other sister, not the one I visited in May, the sister who lives in Virginia. Uh, they were there for like a week, ending yesterday. So apparently July is like family visitation month, um, for my parents anyway. The thing I've been doing lately to try and get ready uh, for this visit is usually I bring some sort of food thing. I make them cookies now that I'm baking more, or I bring them something from, well, I bring Dad something from the H Mart because he loves spicy Korean food. Um, he's, he's a real banh mi enthusiast for, you know, Vietnamese food, and he just, he loves diversity, really. Um, but lately I've been teaching myself canning, uh, which includes preserves, jams, jellies, pickling, etc. I got a 12 pack of mason jars. I got the utility tools, you know, the thing for twisting the lid on and the special tong things for grabbing the jar out of the water. I don't yet have a pot that is specifically the right size for it, but thus far I haven't had a problem. I only have a four quart pot and these are pint sized jars. So I can fit two of them in there, but it gets a little dodgy. Um, these jars have never been used before, so I'm not really worried about the sterilization process. I do need to have a bigger pot by the time I try to reuse any of these mason jars, which can, you can absolutely do. I mean, that's part of the frugality of canning, is that except for that little thin plastic lid under the ring, you can reuse the ring and the glass jar as long as they last. As long as they can withstand the sterilization boiling process and they have no cracks or chips in them and the threads aren't worn down on the ring or the lip you're fine. The only thing you need to replace is that little thin plastic bit because that's what has the tacky stuff on it that makes the sealing process possible for preserving. Those you have to use a new one every time but I mean you can get a box of those for like what six bucks and there's like forty in a box I think so it's, it's very cost efficient. So I've been teaching myself. Well, the first thing I did was make something purely for myself. Big shock. Because that way if I screw it up, who am I disappointing? Me. <clears throat> so I made two batches of strawberry. Well, I made a batch and it filled two jars most of the way because my math was a little off. Because I, I hadn't... My learning curve is weird. So here's the one for me that's open that I have in the fridge now. It's a bit on the thin side, but that's because the only thing in here is strawberry, a crap load of it, sugar, and lime juice. That's it. This got opened and is staying in the fridge because I don't think this will last me more than a month at which point I'm going to make as much more as I possibly can before summer's over. Because this stuff is awesome. I've already tried it on toast, 
on a wheat bagel and I served it to Sam over one of the chocolate muffins I made and it's been good the, the whole way around. Actually the best breakfast I've had in a long time at home I had this morning a toasted whole wheat bagel with creamy peanut butter and some of this. You know like a peanut butter and strawberry jelly but on a toasted wheat bagel it was good. Then the next thing I made was two things for my dad. The first of which, okay, sorry, checking my time. The first of which is blueberry, uh, and it's a jelly. But my dad is diabetic, so I had to find a recipe that would allow me to use sweet and low. And this is only the second thing I'd ever made. Plus it was the first thing I'd ever made with sweet and low. Plus it was the first thing I ever made with pectin to make it into a jelly stable jiggle thing. That's the technical way of phrasing it. So I made him blueberry. Now that batch only made this one jar, but there was a little bit left over that got put in an airtight Tupperware in the fridge for Sam. Because I'm not really a blueberry person. I know. I grew up in Maine. I don't eat lobster and I don't like blueberries. I'm a freak. But you know <clears throat> at the farmers markets they had those blueberry containers. Uh, I went to Union Square so they're like two for eight dollars and they're like that thick by like that. I don't know if that's like a half pint or a pint of blueberries. I think it goes by weight. But that's it's two of those. Two of those fill this one jar. Then the next thing I made was also for my dad, so it also had to have pectin in it, and it also had to be made with sweet and low to be diabetic friendly. But this one was peach and strawberry, because after making the peach thing for myself, uh, the strawberry thing for myself, God, I need food, I had some fresh strawberries left over. So I made him strawberry and peach. Now these have definitely both set up. I mean, you can wiggle them and they're not moving. It's fruit brick, basically. So these are for my dad. When I was at the farmer's market yesterday, I also decided, you know what? There's a crap load of apples. It's not fall yet, but I like sweet apples. I like Gala. I like Fuji. I like Empire. I like Red Delicious. And I said to myself, you know what? We buy applesauce. We use applesauce. I like apple compote the same as I like strawberry compote. Why don't I try it? So, <clears throat> this one, I just made two jars worth. It took me seven apples, and I had a little left over. And I filled two of these. Okay? That's why I'm holding it with a paper towel, because the ring on top is still very warm from the processing, which is what seals it. I made two of those, and oh, do I tried it when it was in the pan, when it had cooled off a little bit, when I was ladling it into the jars. <laughs> a Homer Simpson moment. All I did was use three or four, well, seven, so three of one, four of another, Fuji and Gala apples. What is it, Empire? Fuji and Empire apples. Peeled cord, mashed up in the pan after they cooked a little bit to soften, lemon juice, sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg. So with the exception of one or two ingredients you may be familiar with, I basically made apple pie filling and canned it. Now that's a gorgeous thing. That's a beautiful thing to have done because A, oh my god it tastes so good and B I can now save this until Thanksgiving and make apple pie or apple tarts or whatever or I can simply keep it around in the house and use it for toast in the morning I make popovers I can use it for Sundays when I tend to make big style breakfast in our house which means eggs, probably pancakes, possibly french toast depending on what Sam feels like eating, potentially the popovers or biscuits, um, sometimes I do sausage, sometimes I do bacon, 
usually it's just a veggie omelet customized to each of us with you know carb something on the side but I am absolutely making pancakes this weekend and I'm probably going to make something awesome Saturday morning and then something else awesome Sunday morning just so I can use both the strawberry and the apple. The apple will be on Sunday because this needs at least 24 hours to process. So, well, maybe not. I, I did have the container of extra in the airtight Tupperware. I don't know. There's too much goodness. And I'll tell you what. I posted a status to myself. Note to past self. Why were you not canning things sooner? You could have saved so much money. Dumbass. In that kind of a vein was the status update. And then the, the note to my present self was, you know, God, you're so clever and thrifty for canning all this stuff. You're a genius. And then the note to my future self <laughs> was me saying, make sure you teach your kids about how freaking delicious and thrifty doing this is. And be sure to enjoy all the money you save by doing it for so many years. So, that's the end of this posting. Um, I think having examples or, or things to show you makes the process a little bit longer uh, without me realizing it because I'm just now looking at the clock and I've been talking for 11 and a half minutes. So I'm going to stop now because I'm going to go make sure that my food's on the way. And I will talk to you all later.